Hello people of the internet, this is Adopted Mike and today I'm going to be shooting a video of a client build that I'm doing so we'll start off at the left here we're going to be using Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit this is the Fractal Design Core 1000 case we're going to be using an X4750K that's a socket FM2 Athlon processor and we're going to be using it with the ASUS A88XM Plus motherboard I've got some uh, gold RAM to go along with the gold motherboard that is 8 gigabytes of 2400 DDR3 we've got a Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD there a 1 terabyte Seagate Barracuda behind that and then we have a CX 500 500 watt power supply we're going to be using a GeForce GTX 660 uh, I'm going to be also cooling the processor with the Gemin 2M4 CPU cooler and I'm going to be upgrading the slimline fan on that to something with a little more performance and then last but probably still the least anyway is a DVD reader drive there at the bottom so anyway let's go ahead and get started now personally I start off by uh, getting into the case and getting the case uh, set up and ready for the hardware to go in so I just kind of do like I'm doing here pop everything out and I take a look at uh, everything in here and see if there's anything else I need like I'm gonna need an additional fan here for the rear um, we'll probably you know we'll need to pop out this top drive cover stuff like that so yeah so anyway that's where I start off just kind of by taking a look at the inside and going on from there all right, so I got the basic uh, modifications to the case started. I added the uh, fan in the back, 92 millimeter. I mounted the DVD drive and I mounted the SSD up in there. I'm intending to um, actually mount the hard drive on this side panel here just to allow that front air to kind of blow across the top of the hard drive, hopefully keeping it just a little bit cooler got the standoffs installed and now I'm ready to get started on the motherboard alright here's the board um, I did an unboxing and quick overview in another video of mine so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, get started by uh, putting in the processor and the RAM and then uh, getting the heatsink mounted as well and here's a look for anybody that's curious um, this is the Vulcan RAM by team group and this is their gold heat sink so I just wanted to show off real quick uh, how well or well how it does as um, you know with the the gold accents on this motherboard well rather the golden yellow so it does uh, really well with the heat sinks obviously because the heat sinks um, they're metal so they do gold a lot better than plastic pieces but uh, so I mean it, it does do a pretty good job with uh, the gold heat sinks so I think uh, I think I did well uh, with that pick because I mean it's just other than black there really wasn't a lot of uh, RAM color choices that would go with this uh, with this board combination very well so there we go with the RAM okay we've got the RAM CPU and the heat sink fan all installed and how about this we have a Zalman uh, ultra quiet fan and we have it on a cooler master heat sink so I thought that would be interesting but anyway here we can see I uh, got rid of the low profile one that comes with this and went with a uh, standard fan so we should be able to get quite a bit better cooling now we'll continue on alright so here I have the motherboard installed in the case and I've already started over here you can see some uh, working on the uh, cable management and stuff like that so now I will continue on uh, we'll mount the hard drive and then we'll get the uh, power supply installed in the top okay so I got everything all uh, hooked up and ready to install windows we've got the uh, 500 watt power supply is put in there and you can see in the back like before we talked about we've got the DVD drive and the SSD mounted and they are both uh, hooked up to the motherboard via the SATA interface and then we scroll down here a bit and we got the GPU installed and we also have the uh, hard drive installed there is um, there is plenty of space in between uh, the 
hard drive and GPU so there won't be any transferring of vibration or anything like that uh, back and forth so basically uh, the cable management is what it is there's no uh, man cable management behind the motherboard tray like in some other cases so I kinda had to make it work uh, as well as I could you can get a glimpse of it there it's um, obviously ne less noticeable head-on um, but uh, the only other option would have been possibly a modular power supply other than that though I uh, got everything tidied up good so we should have airflow zip tied down so cables shouldn't move anything like that and now let's uh, jump in and I will install the OS so after I install Windows then I obviously do all of the updates next and then I put a few utilities on it uh, one of my uh, first ones that I run is Furmark here I usually let that run for that 15 minute burn in that it does uh, just to test out the stability of the GPU typically if I'm ever gonna have a failure it fails uh, while running Furmark like this particular one here the first GPU uh, that I put in the system did fail I had to request uh, or send an RMA and get a new one and the second one is uh, successful and then after that I'll run Prime 95 for four plus hours. Uh, usually it's overnight, just depending on the time frame that I have. And if Prime 95 reports any errors, uh, then I run a mem test uh, for a few test cycles as well to kind of single it out if it's the RAM or the CPU. But I don't recall, I've never had a CPU fail on me at this point anyway, especially a new one. I've definitely had used ones uh, fail, but not a new one. And I've never had any RAM fail either, so knock on wood there. Then I load up Unigen and I have it loop a few times, you know, just to test the CPU, GPU, the RAM, everything together at the same time. And all said, I probably have, um, I would guess, at least eight hours of testing. And that's assuming everything goes right. Obviously, it definitely takes longer if everything doesn't go right. But I feel like anything that's going to fail is probably going to fail while I have it. And then at least I can get it resolved before the customer ever even sees it. And most of the time, like I've had two or three failures of parts, the customer would rather wait a few more days than have it fail on them and then have to bring it back to me. So I'd much rather just do it that way and then just, you know, call the customer and say, hey, I'm sorry, something failed. I want to make it right. And usually at that point, everything works out really well. Anyway, that wraps up the video here on this build. If you like the video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you dislike the video, go ahead and give me the thumbs down. And in the comment section below, tell me what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.